Besides pyramids, mummies and golden treasures, there's more to one of the wealthiest historical places in the world, ancient Egypt. Did you know that some Egyptian men married their real sisters? Strange, right? And do you know what Egyptian women used as birth control? Crocodile dung. Let's get in our time machine and travel back in time to unravel the shocking dark secrets our history teachers forgot to mention in school. Just like the so-called Egyptian king forgot to mention that she was indeed a woman disguised as a man. While having a woman rule an empire is not shocking, what's shocking is the fact that they ruled while making people think they were men. The crowning ceremony of the new king used to be held after and sometimes before the previous king's death, and power and the throne were likely to be shifted to the unexpected candidate. There were at least three occasions when women ruled ancient Egypt as kings, and they had all the power and might of male kings. We might classify Sobeknefru, Hatshepsut, and Talsret as queens regnant in English, where the word king is gender-specific. However, the term queen in Egyptian literally translates to king's wife, which is completely inappropriate for these women. The most famous and successful ruler, Hatshepsut, is still known as an amazing ruler, as she ruled Egypt for over 20 years with a great boom in the law and economy of ancient Egypt. Egyptian Laws during Hatshepsut's reign, she founded many new laws and traditions, which the people of Egypt had to abide by. While some of these laws made sense, others were quite questionable. For instance, one of the foundations of the modern legal system is that the accused is considered innocent until proven guilty. This is one of the major reasons people have long approved of the Western legal system, where the accused knows that they will get fair treatment and a speedy trial, and at least they won't be considered guilty before even getting a chance to defend themselves. However, the legal system of ancient Egypt presumed the accused guilty from the beginning, and they were required to prove their innocence in front of the court. As mentioned earlier, they would often get beaten for confession, and sometimes even the witness was beaten to get the information related to the crime if they seemed suspicious. This system made many innocent people victims of oppression and suffered throughout their lives. Slaves were put to death to be buried next to their masters. While we're on the subject of oppression, are you aware that the slaves of Egyptian masters were buried with them in their tombs? Records suggest that the servants and enslaved people of pharaohs and other significant people in history were ceremonially killed and buried alongside their deceased masters, so that their masters could be served by them in afterworld. This practice is known as retainer sacrifice. Many people believe that this is just a theory, but the truth is upsetting. The ritual of killing and burying servants with the masters was gradually eliminated from the culture. Still, this inhumane execution was once a major part of the history of ancient Egypt. The servants who were being killed and buried like this never thought that they were being oppressed or murdered. The ancient Egyptians had a very complicated relationship with life and death as they were obsessed with the afterlife and would go too far with the concept of God. So, the people chosen to get buried like this would regard themselves as lucky and privileged enough to be led by a superior personality and serve a prominent figure in life after death. However, it was still a brutal and vicious practice as there was uncertainty about the servant's life because it was tied to the death of the masters they would work for. Mummies were commonly eaten as medicine by people in Europe. As if being buried alive wasn't enough, after Egyptians were mummified and buried, their bodies were resurfaced. But why? In the 1600s and 1700s, a sudden craze came about in the Egyptian community, which involved cutting and crushing various parts of the human body to recover from various diseases. It began when people crushed mummies and then put that into a tincture and claimed that it would cure all ailments. But then it went to the extreme where people would drink blood in order to heal blood-related diseases and even crush the skull and eat it to cure brain-related problems. This practice might be seen as indecent and filthy in the modern world, but there was a time in Europe when it was encouraged and normalized. Eating human flesh, called cannibalism, can be very disturbing for many people. Even the thought of flesh-eating can make most people feel gross and nauseous. A lot of people feel sick to their stomachs when they even hear of it. Humans feel disgusted and terrified when they are even reminded of the Donna Party, where people ate other humans when they were already dead. Ancient Egyptian police tortured people to get confessions. Similar to the mind-boggling act of cannibalism in ancient Egypt were the gruesome tactics of getting a confession out of people. 
Just like in European societies, it was widespread to beat the confessions out of people for ancient Egyptian police. The accused were brutally beaten unless they confessed their crimes. It is recorded that they were usually beaten with sticks, generally at the bottom of their feet. The people who were tortured into confessing were not only barbarously beaten to admit their crime, but they were also expected to provide every detail about that happening and their accomplices. Sadly, like many other faulty legal systems, it is impossible to determine how many innocent people were the victims of such acts and how many were severely punished as they were forced to take responsibility for crimes that they didn't even do in the first place. Usually, people fall prey to such tortures and make false confessions when the pain becomes unbearable. The slaves did not build the Great Pyramid Speaking of falsifying information and getting confessions, it was believed by the famous historian Herodotus that the Great Pyramid was built by a 100,000 slaves, comprising of men, women and children. It is said that they worked in extreme conditions under harsh climates. This theory is popular as it makes a very good story for filmmakers. In contrast to popular belief, the Great Pyramid was built by a manpower of 5,000 permanent salaried employees and up to 20,000 temporary workers. These workers were not slaves. They were free men and were called to work under a corvée system for at least three to four months on the building site. A temporary camp was set up for such people near the pyramid and they would get food, drink, medical assistance and burial in the nearby cemetery for those who died on duty. While it was common for Egyptians to have slaves, they were most commonly used in field work or domestic work. A hippopotamus might have killed King Tutankhamun. One of the greatest pyramids to have ever been built by these salaried craftsmen was the Pyramid of Pharaoh Tutankhamun. This pyramid was built to memorialize the death of Pharaoh Tutankhamun. Not much is known about the life and death of the young pharaoh, but some historians claim to know how he died. Scans of his body show that the king's body was preserved without his heart or chest wall, indicating that he might have suffered from a severe injury before his demise. According to some Egyptologists, a bite from a hippopotamus might be a major reason for this wound. Records suggest that ancient Egyptians used to hunt beasts for sport, and it can also be found in the statues found in King Tutankhamun's tomb, where he is shown in the act of throwing a harpoon. It was considered manly and sporty to indulge in such activities, and if the young pharaoh was fond of such wild games, it is possible for it to be the cause of his death. The living shared food with the dead Did you know that the tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun was broken into? Some say it was because people wanted to steal his gold and treasures. Others say he resurrected and escaped from his tomb. But there is also a theory that Egyptians broke into his tomb to share food. As a lot of you know, it was the tradition of ancient Egyptians to build tombs for their deceased. The tomb was considered an eternal home for the mummified body and the Ka spirit. There was an accessible chapel in the tomb that let the family, loved ones and priests leave regular offerings for the Ka spirit and the dead. Within the chapel of the tomb, it was regular for the well-wishers and the family of the dead to offer food and drink. When the Ka spirit consumed the offerings, the living would continue eating them. There was also an annual festival of death and continuation called the Feast of the Valley, in which many families used to spend their nights inside the chapel of the tomb of their loved ones. The night was celebrated by eating and drinking, the living enjoying their reunion with the dead people. The death penalty was extremely painful. While entering tombs to share food was allowed, if you were caught breaking into a tomb for any other reason, there were serious consequences. Laws and regulations in ancient Egypt were quite strict. Beating the accused harshly for confessions and punishment was a common practice for the people of ancient Egypt. Although the Egyptians were very strict and many times brutal in beatings and punishments, they were rarely against the death penalty or carrying our capital punishments. While there were rulings under the law, capital punishments were avoided and it was very rare for someone to get the death penalty. There was even a period of over 150 years when no executions were carried out in the ancient Egyptian empire. However, if someone had done an intolerable crime like murder or betraying the country, he would get a death sentence. If someone would make an offence to the gods, especially the sun god, he was given the punishment of being burnt alive. Just like that, there were brutal capital punishments like drowning, decapitation and even impalement on a stake. These punishments were rare but were indeed gut-wrenching and agonising.
some Egyptian men got married to their sisters. Want to hear one of the most bizarre secrets of Egypt? While this was not a common practice in ancient Egypt, it was accepted to some extent, and some kings in Egypt married their half-sisters or sisters. Some members of the royal family followed this depraved practice to ensure that the queen was aware and trained in her duties, in her upbringing, and remained completely loyal to her family, husband, and their kids. This practice also ensured that princesses, who would otherwise remain unmarried, found appropriate partners while reducing the number of potential candidates for the throne. The people of Egypt provided a link of gods with such incestuous marriages. However, this was not something mandatory, and many significant rulers of Egypt were not from the royal family. Until the end of the dynastic era, incestuous marriages were uncommon outside the royal family. There has been a lot of confusion revolving around this issue due to the restricted Egyptian kingship terminology. Only the terms father, mother, brother, sister, son and daughter were used, and the tendency to apply these terms loosely so that sister could equally apply to describe an actual sister, a wife or a lover. Ancient Egyptians used the most bizarre birth control. Speaking of marriage and families, modern people use birth control pills and condoms and predict the menstrual cycle in order to prevent unwanted pregnancy. As many of you know, birth control methods have existed for centuries. Research has revealed the existence of sheepskin condoms in the ancient world. It is also said that ancient Romans would use a plant for birth control so frequently that they made it go extinct. These and many other methods were common for ancient people to follow when they were not ready for procreation. Having said that, the method that ancient Egyptians used was so strange that it got eyes rolled. Egyptians would apply a mixture of honey and crocodile dung and then plaster it all over the female reproductive part in order to avoid pregnancy. They considered it a spermicide, and this method is considered one of the most ancient methods for birth control. However, modern studies suggest that this method could result in increasing the chances of pregnancy. Either way, it feels disgusting to even think of putting such stuff around the most intimate area of the body. If you found this video interesting, we're sure you will like this video about the history of the Nigerian slave trade as well, so click here.